Let us pray. Lord, show us just how important our baptism really is. Create in us a new fervor toward baptism so that we can begin to see just how meaningful and impactful its promise truly is. Amen. Amen. So in the Lutheran Church, we have two sacraments. We all know them, right? First one. Baptism. Second one. Communion. You got it. Third one. Bonus round. Confession. <laughs> that one's a gray area, though. We're, we're not sure about that one, but Luther wanted it to be one. Uh, you know, we're learning so much today. It was meant to be seen as a... <laughs> all right, all right, I'm, I'm back in it. Okay. Communion. It is standard, you probably heard it before, to be baptized before you commune. Right? It's the standard thing. And it wasn't meant to be this way, to be a sort of gatekeeping. However, it kind of turned into that eventually, unfortunately. But to me, pausing to be baptized before we participate in communion is a good spiritual practice. It's really about being intentional about entering into the promise of the Eucharist and of baptism. Before we enter into this weekly sustenance through communion, 
I believe it's important that we enter into our lifelong commitment in our baptism. And that promise is to spread the good news of Christ's liberating power from death and sin. And through water and spirit in our baptism, we are cleansed with the presence of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are baptized or dunked or sprinkled. And then we are free from our own shortcomings. That's what God promised. It's our new beginning into a life that brings life and fosters life rather than an old life that sought death and fostered death. That's baptism. And I love baptism. I love the imagery of water. I love the element of water. Water is, it can be so powerful it can destroy, but it's so powerful it causes life. I love everything about baptism. But I do know that God shows up outside of the sacraments in various ways. God isn't contained to the Eucharist. God isn't contained to baptism, just like God wasn't contained to the temple in Jesus' time. But baptism and the Eucharist are where God promises to always be. And God doesn't promise that everywhere else. God can show up anywhere else, but God promises to be in baptism and the Eucharist. Going back to the idea of baptism first, for me, it's an ideal, and it makes the most theological sense, in my opinion. But I would never deny anyone communion if they weren't baptized, ever. If you're not baptized, you are welcome at this table. I just feel that going through baptism and confirmation, it makes the sacrament become more alive in our hearts and more alive in our existence here on earth. Because in baptism and confirmation, we make a public affirmation of our faith, or at the very least, a desire to live into the promises that we make at baptism, to love and serve our neighbor, to care about one another, to do things with love, graciousness, to live into a life of forgiveness. When we enter into the, then the sacrament of the altar, where we are given the strength and the courage to keep doing that. The sacrament gives us the strength to keep doing the sacrament of the baptism. Our promise, let me say that again, that didn't come out right. The sacrament of baptism gives us a promise that we make. The sacrament of the altar gives us the strength to keep entering into that promise. Baptism is our starting point, is what I'm trying to say. It is our eternal cleansing that prepares us to eat the body and blood of Christ. It is also the place where we can say that we participated in the same baptismal cleansing as our Lord and Savior Jesus. That I find so awesome. That God didn't say to do this, and then God didn't do it God's self. God was baptized with us. That's cool. When we are baptized, we enter into the reality that God is here with us and not just for us. God is here with us, not just here for us. So when we participate, participate in the sacrament of the altar, we are assured weekly that through our baptism, this meal will continue to sustain us in our pursuit to live into the promise we received at baptism and the pro promise that we gave at baptism. And as an extra source of strength and comfort to keep going, every few months, I like to offer a healing and anointing opportunity. I take oil, as you've seen before, and I anoint you just like Jesus was anointed. It reminds us that we are with God through this life. Jesus experienced the horrors and the joys of this life so that God would know what it was like to be human. And even through it all, even after being crucified, killed by God's own creation, we are still very much loved and wanted by our God. And this healing, anointing for, for us 
is a reminder that even though we go through these struggles in life, Jesus went through them too and is here with us. And you will feel the, ho- the holy oil on your forehead and the sign of a cross as a reminder that God is always there in front of us, taking on the burden that we have with us. So as last time, if you would like a, an anointing with oil and a prayer for healing, I will be over here in the middle, and you're welcome to come up as you desire. Amen.